If one thing is clear from the numerous corroborating stories of what can only be described as planetary scale lightning, it's that something frighteningly electrodynamic can happen to this planet. If you recall Dr. Robert Schock's interview, which is linked below if you missed it, he has actually found both the scarring of the Earth and the ancient accounts of its witness by the Egyptian people. He has found the vitrification in the ground, carved down into the surface, and in what the ancients described as a giant lightning bolt knocking off the back of the Sphinx during a time of great upheaval. He demonstrates how this could have been no ordinary lightning, and a meteor or other vitrification mechanism would have completely destroyed the monuments on the Giza Plateau. So what does this look like, and how severe of a blast are we looking at? What did the ancients actually see, and is there any realistic physical mechanism we can identify to explain it? The answer is yes, and it's exceptionally similar to how a magnetar burst works, essentially. So much energy goes through its lowest level L-shell magnetic fields that its pathway directly to ground becomes the least resistant pathway, and they say it literally cracks the surface of the star. Well, Earth is set up magnetically in exactly the same way. We have the poloidal field wrapping around the planet from pole to pole, but also the lower level L-shell fields at those lower latitudes, the lowest of which was the recent examinee of numerous plasma physicists, this video actually becoming somewhat famous about three or four years ago. Whether it would be a micronova or even a super flare, Earth sits at major risk of a similar electrodynamic scenario. Instead of a surge from the surface, like a magnetar, here the surge of energy is from the outside. So it's worse actually because it's compressing and pushing the L shells down into the atmosphere. We already know this happens to a small degree, with both the fields and the Van Allen belts as relativistic electrons have been detected from their being pushed into the atmosphere by modern day space weather events, but in the most severe one, the lowest level L shells need only to reach a threshold energy, and they will begin to discharge down in the only actual way to reconcile all those ancient stories of cosmic lightning. It's also the only way the Egyptians could have witnessed the vitrification event. This is what Dr. Peratt has also spent his life studying outside of his classified plasma physics work. He led the teams that found all those petroglyphs all around the world, and he wishes to express to you 100% that he agrees it's a solar disaster, and in a micronova or super flare, some form of this is virtually inevitable. And of course, as is implied on the screen, when the field drops to 50%, 30%, 10%, exactly how many of the more common CMEs we regularly see might be able to have such an arc discharge effect? Even without the major arc discharge, modern geomagnetically induced current threatens power grids, telecom, and transportation industries. Take away Earth's magnetic shield, no copper wire is safe. But also, the big blast itself could be the trigger that sets the magnetic reversal of Earth into finality. While it is true that the pattern suggests that at this trend, the magnetic field will reverse if you give it enough time. But with the application of a tremendous electromagnetic injection, the polarization of an entire body can be reversed. It was reconfirmed in a laboratory setting just earlier this year. Right now, the best working theory is that if this galactic current sheet exists, which the mainstream now even believes is part of the large-scale coherent galactic structure, then it will impact our solar system on a regular cycle, just like the Sun's current sheet hits Earth every two weeks. You see here all the places it crosses the galactic equator. This is not something we're going to be able to avoid. Now, as we enter the sheet as a solar system, the Earth may begin to react magnetically, like we've seen, perhaps not even needing the solar flash, as I mentioned, but if we get it, if the sheet affects the sun as well, that's your gigantic electromagnetic injection, one that might not just take its induction to the mantle, but all the way to the core. 